Carried through a mountain on the surface of an underground river, Tarzan and his friends are captured by a band of yellow giants. Mounted on elephants, the entire company is transported to the distant city of Tor, where the captives are taken before Atea, queen of the yellow men. Their audience with Atea is interrupted by the arrival of Tongo, a chief of the claw men, several of whom have been killed by Tarzan's party. Atea informs Tarzan that the laws of Tor permit a chief to claim the right of avenging the death of any of his men by personal combat with the one who has slain them. She adds that Tongo has come to claim that right. Tarzan accepts the challenge and stands quietly awaiting the attack of the gigantic yellow claw man. <coughs> With a roar of fury, Tongo, his great cudgel raised high above his head, leaps toward the ape man. Frida! Frida! Tarzan's answering challenge echoes through the vast chamber as he springs forward to meet the furious attack of the yellow savage. Ah, the heathen's too big for him, Lieutenant. I'm going to give him a hand. No, no, no. Keep out. Lead him to Tarzan. Watch. In a hissing arc, the giant's cudgel descends toward Tarzan's head. Nimbly, the ape man sidesteps the blow, causing Tongo to plunge awkwardly past him. Again and again, the giant rushes, his heavy club sweeping harmlessly through the air as Tarzan easily avoids each furious assault. Abruptly, the claw man changes his tactic. With a howl of baffled rage, Tongo springs to the side of one of the watching yellow men, whips the long double-edged sword from its teeth at his side, and leaps back to renew the attack. Tarzan's hand drops to the long, keen knife at his waist. Stepping lightly outside the sword's hissing arc, he springs in close under Tongo's great yellow arms. His knife flashes twice, like lightning. He steps clear. Tongo's sword patters to the floor. His great yellow hands claw at his breast. Slowly he turns to Atea. With a weird death cry, he crashes forward on his face. Why, the cats have killed Kenny. If he didn't do it again. <laughs> the venerable cues of my exalted ancestors. This man, Tarzan, is astonishing. Great Scott, Dino. He doesn't show even the slightest sign of fatigue. Is the man made of iron? I myself sometimes believe Tarzan to be almost superhuman, Major. Oh, he's, he's wonderful, Terry. Tarzan, you have bested the mighty Tongo in single combat. You are in truth a king. You have decided about us? Yes, I have decided. For the present, you and your friends will remain in Tor as the guests of Atea. We are to be prisoners, then. You do not understand. Ateo said, guess. We are free to come and go as we please? Yes, Tarzan. Within certain limits. We have your permission to study the uh, cultural aspect of your city? You may go where you please. Within the walls, of course. You will not be molested by my subjects. No, no, Mungo will take you to your quarters. But before he does so, Atea has something to show you. Mungo, see that one of the prisoners of Rathor is brought to the hall of Pantu. Come, Tarzan. Uncle Jim, this place gives me the creeps. I'd rather be out in the jungle, away from that woman. Well, she's... She's a fiend. Steady, my dear. We've got to take things as they come. Stick close to us, Janetta Kushler. I don't trust the good-looking little she-devil. She don't believe you told the truth about Tarzan. Yeah, I know she doesn't, Terry. That's why I'm afraid of her. She looked at me as though she'd <laughs> like to. Jealousy, my dear Janetta? Oh, no, Dr. Wong. Oh, surely not that. A jealous woman always finds more than she looks. Or do you know, Monsieur le Docteur, where Atea is taking us? Probably to some dungeon. It would not surprise me. Mm, je crois que non. I believe not. Wait, wait. Those double doors, the guards are opening. As the heavy doors, moved by two giant guards, swing slowly open, the little company finds itself on the threshold of an enormous round chamber, a room hewn out of solid rock. It is brightly lighted by huge torches. Facing the doorway and seated upon a massive black rock throne is a gigantic figure, utterly hideous, of burnished gold. The head is that of a lion, 
The body and legs, human. The feet terminate in two huge talon-like claws. The arms held straight out before the body support between them an iron grill, like the barred gate of an ancient dungeon. Beneath the grill, in the rock floor, is a square section of massive stone blocks. Faith, and will you look at that faith and idol now? Gold, be got it. Or I'm blind. Impossible, Terry. It's too huge. Some other metal. Follow. Monsieur Rook is right, Major. You see the carved decoration and the inscription covering its breast? They are deeply engraved. I am of the opinion that figure is of solid gold. Gold, eh? <laughs> I wonder where they get it. These people must be... Uh, are not those large gleaming stones about its throat diamonds? Be gurry, Wong. Here's a fortune for the taking. Your words are like a page written in vermilion ink, my friend. Do you people know where we are? Why, what do you mean? By the Kilkenny cats. I believe we're in the central rock tower. Tarzan of the Apes and you others. The chamber you are in is the hall of sacrifice. It is here that we of Thor worship Pantu. And who or what is Pantu? Pantu is the god of fire. That golden figure is his image. Why did you bring us here, Athea? That you will see presently. When Mungo comes. This chamber, O oh daughter of Thor, is a part of your uh, palace? Yes. But it was not built by the hand of man. It has always stood here. My ancestors constructed the palace around it because of the fires of Thor, which are far below this chamber. Oh, Mengoratore, Mungo, enter and let your men place this spy of Rator in the arms of Pantu. Tarzan of the Apes, you asked why Ateo brought you to the hall of Pantu. You shall see now. Make haste, Mungo. What are they going to do with that man, Tarzan? They're chaining him to the grill. What horrible thing is Atea going to do now? I don't know. Wait. This looks, Tarzan, very much like a sacrifice. Atea, who is the man Mungo has on that grill? A spy of Rapor, Tarzan of the Apes. He was sent here to harm Atea and her people. It is the will of Pantu that he die. You mean you're going to kill the poor devil without giving him a chance to fight for his life? Silence, you of the red hair. Oh, be gurry, me, me hair ain't red, and I'll not shut up. But by the saints of old Ireland, Terry O'Rourke will not stand by and see a man, yellow hair than or not, killed without giving him a hand. Hold your tongue, Terry. Do you want to get us all killed? Those guards would overwhelm us in an instant. Remember, we are unarmed. If there were anything to be done, Monsieur O'Rourke, Tarzan would do it. Ah, there. If that man is to be murdered, must we stand by and look on? Who speaks of murder? The Rathorian has been condemned to death by sacrifice. Do what you like with your prisoners, Atea. They are nothing to me. But none of us are interested in watching the sacrifice of a helpless man to your heathen god. As long as we are free to come and go, we're going now. You will remain and watch, Tarzan, and all of you. I, Atea, wish it. Mungo, Suna Wongo, Tuktu, Tarzan, Mange, Aruk. What? Mingo, over I. At Atea's sharp command, Mungo growls a guttural order to his men. They move forward and quietly surround Tarzan and the party of whites. Before they realize what has happened, each one of the group is grasped from behind by two of the giant yellow guards. Tarzan, writhing and twisting like a snake, is about to break loose from the bear like embrace of the two holding him when Mungo, at a sharp command from Atea, places the keen point of a broadsword firmly against the ape man's chest. It is not my wish to harm you, Tarzan of the Apes. Yet if you resist further, I shall order Mungo to thrust home his sword. And your friend <laughs> will as surely be given into the embrace of Kanto. Cheng ne mung mung hong, Tarzan. Please, my friend, be not rash. Though it be distasteful to us all, we must accept the inevitable. Wise counsel indeed, Wong Tai. If your friends follow it, no harm will come to them. 
Tarzan of the Apes, you and your friends are about to witness that which no other white man has ever seen. Watch closely. Quickly, Atea moves to the side of the golden idol, picking up a padded stick that lies on the black stone throne whereon the lion-headed god rests. She strikes three blows upon a deep-toned gong. A door in the wall of the chamber behind the idol opens. Twelve huge, naked, yellow-skinned fire priests enter, each bearing in his outstretched hands a blue flaming torch. Chanting softly, the priests circle the huge idol three times. At the completion of the last circle, Atea grasps an iron lever in the base of the throne and pulls it toward her. Beneath the grill, the center block and the square section of stones slides back with a dull, grinding sound. A tremendous draft of air sweeps up through the hole in the floor made by the sliding stone. A deep roaring sound is heard far below in the depths of the earth. As if conjured up by magic, a monstrous column of blue flame rises through the hole to hungrily envelop the iron grill and the chained figure reclining upon it. With a quick forward thrust of the lever, Atea closes the stone trap. The roaring column of flame vanishes. The twelve priests, still chanting, file out of the chamber. Silence. Look, Tarzan of the Apes, and you, Jeanette Burton, thus are they punished who disregard the laws of Torah and the will of Atea. Look, wow. The fellows vanished on near the breast. Pray the saints. Nothing left but a few ashes. A wee bit of a dust cloud. Dust to dust. Thus are those dealt with who disregard my wish and will. It is the will of Atea, Tarzan of the Apes, that you remain in Tor as king of the yellow men and the mate of Atea. 